So this interview is brought to you by Burn It Up Coaching and the 21 Day Challenge. If you're an entrepreneur or a high achiever and you are not succeeding like you truly desire, you feel like something's missing, you feel like you're spinning your wheels or that there's just this void that you want to fill within you, then the 21 Day Challenge will help you reignite your passion, your self-belief, your destiny like never before so you can see succeed like never before it's gonna be a lot of fun 21 day challenge send me a message chris at be your gps.com or on facebook and let me know you want to dive into your 21 day challenge to create that new reality cool or cool very cool next up is the itunes review of the week and it's by unlimited beliefs and unlimited beliefs says helpful usable content Really like this show. This content is so helpful because it's told through the story of the guest, which is relatable, and it's easy to plug in and use as well as inspiring along the way. Tune in. Thanks so much, Unlimited Beliefs. If you want to give us a review, go to beyourgps.com forward slash iTunes or search Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self on the iTunes store. Thanks so much for doing that in advance. We appreciate you giving that feedback. Now, we're going to be diving into Christian's interview in just a second. And before that, make sure you stick around through this entire interview because we're going to dive into some deep, powerful, juicy topics. It's going to be epic. Have your pen, have your paper ready to take notes, whatever the case might be. Soak up the wisdom that Christian is going to bring to you so you can transform your life and step into your GPS. Good or good? We're going to dive into this in just a second. Let's introduce him and then bring him on, okay? Christian is a self-worth specialist, TEDx speaker, and has been three times featured on the Huffington Post. He's mad about bachata dancing. I love it. He helps people get hard results in relationships and business by reclaiming their self-worth and getting honest with what they truly desire. And we're blessed to have Christian here with us today. Christian, are you ready to rock this, brother? <laughs> I'm so ready, man. So Boom! You're so ready. I love it, dude. You're now live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Thanks so much for being here and diving into this conversation to really empower us to step into our self-worth and self-belief, man. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you. You're welcome, brother. Um, and you nailed um, bachata probably better than <laughs> I say it. So I, that, means I, that means I know you know something about it. <laughs> Took a few dancing lessons or two, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's 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 been a blast. I, I love I love being in in. I grew up in SoCal, so I was like around a bunch of Mexicans and in a good way. You know, Mexicans are awesome. Lo- love the love the Latin culture. And then my girlfriend lived in Spain for four years, so she speaks Spanish, and that really like uh, empowers me to step up my accents, uh, mi acentos even more. You know. <laughs> 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 I love it. It's awesome, man. So, Christian, let's dive into into the question of the day, man. It's how to make 2019 your best year ever. How are you doing that, and how can our audience do that as well, man? Oh, what a big question! First up, <laughs> Ooh, how am I doing it? Well, um, how I'm doing it is is listening to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, that's so key. I, I, I've been on. Um, my coaching path for eight years. I've been coaching people for eight years and for about three or four, I've been like, I'm going to make a serious business of this. Yeah. And at the moment, um, there's, I, I'm letting a lot of things die. Uh, I'm letting a lot of desires and a lot of ways I was seeing my coaching business and, and seeing coaching and, and, and the business of coaching. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, die away. And that's both both scary and really exciting. And so for me um, and for everyone, you know, watching, uh, it, it's really, I believe, about listening. Hmm. Damn. That's that's incredible, dude. I love starting off with some fire, man. Starting off with like a conversation about letting things die. And that's that's so so mm-hmm. powerful because in a world where we're trying to hold on, I it's so funny. I interviewed Daniel Eisenman on the last interview, super powerful. Um where at, where I and I perceive other people, but you know, everyone has their own reality. Um where I am like attempting to hold on to so many things and keep that um keep that, you know, grip on on reality, trying to be in control, trying to you know um to to like keep as much as possible because like there's a scarcity there's a lack mindset that i have been relieve relieving myself of and releasing and removing and now i'm stepping into more abundance more prosperity i think it's such a powerful 
reality and perspective to step into that, you know, we get, we get to let things die, things that don't serve us, things that are outdated, things that other people say that we should have, but aren't truly our own voice and our own message and our own truth. It's freaking powerful, dude. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I, when I hear you say that, what comes up for me is, is like um, pruning, you know, pruning mm. the bushes. Yeah. We, we cut branches off or we cut leaves off, you know, <laughs> when we're doing our gardening so that it can actually grow and flourish uh, yeah. in a better way. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Freaking powerful. So, Christian, what, what is it that, that you're standing for today, man? What is it that you really stand for and what do your clients come to you for that your stand helps? Is that ultimately what you mean? Yeah, that is. I, I love that. Um, yeah, you know, the, the more we flex the muscle, the, the, the faster that we can move through. And um, yeah, for, for me, the, the dragon is a gift. Mm. there's gifts in that dragon and um, the way that I have started to really operate things is like um, that's not necessarily something to like conquer I'm not massive mm, yeah not something to conquer or like do like positive mindset like you know kind of reframes to Um, Mm. they have time and place Um, but like it, it won't change until we feel it. Like feeling not enough won't change until we actually sit with it and just like literally, I mean, just sitting here feeling like, huh, I feel like I'm not enough. Cool. Welcome. Like you welcome that, mm. welcome that onto, onto the bus, so to speak. And it's, um, yeah, it, it, it's like, um, <laughs> if you've ever played, the, we have a game here called Hungry Hippos. Like it's, yeah. A, it's yeah, I played it. Yeah, and you like you get the balls and you pull them back. Yeah, yeah so that, that's that's how I see reclaiming our self worth. It's mm. like, oh, there's my self worth over there in the quarter of a million dollar Lamborghini. Great, I'm gonna pull that back here. Mm. Oh, there's my self worth over there having status as a lawyer. Okay, I'll pull that back. Mm. And so, because if we play when we when we place our worth externally, that's a that's a losing game. Like you've yeah. lost because you know you might lose the job, you might total the Ferrari, you um, and someone is always going to have a better freaking Ferrari or that yep. thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's just a losing game, and it's also it's not to say I don't have those things. I right. think um, one of the things that I'm massive about is um, is play, and I like playing you know, th- with what, what we've created in this world, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, so it's being able to see that we've placed our value in something external um, and it's sitting with it. Like, so literally we're sitting, sitting here and um, like, okay, whew, I feel like I'm not enough. And then because whatever reason, right? Because I'm, I'm not as buff as, as these guys over here in the gym. Okay. Yeah, that, that feels that feels like crap, you know, like ugh. And so we sit with it, and then what is the what is like the process of of like reclaiming it? What's the process of like owning it again? Like, how do you like literally take that back yeah. and keep it, so to speak? Yeah, good question. So um, that that is the process is is simply sitting and feeling and welcoming it. Because mm. as long as we're as long as we're avoiding the feeling, mm. then again, game over. Like, could, then we will constantly avoid it. So mm. we need to get comfortable with the feeling of I'm not enough. Um, and it's the same with anything. It's like we need to get comfortable with the feeling of fuck. Maybe I'm the, maybe I am the, the best at the world best in the world at podcast interviews. Maybe I'm the best speaker in the world. Like whatever it is that, you, that you're unwilling to feel, then, then you'll be moving away from that. Hmm. Um, and so first part is, is feeling. Um, and, and the second part is um, like what my experience is when I have done that enough, I, I can simply become, like you said, Wait one sec. What's going on, computer? Um, 
Like, I, I can do that so much faster now. Yeah. So, like, sometimes I don't need to sit and feel. I'll just be like, oh, I was, I was giving my worth away. Okay, mm. come on back. You know, mm. it's just like, here, here you go. And it's, so now it's like, it's then a choice. So, so what I hear is like you recognize the power was away, and, c- and you can feel it. You can there's an experience of being powerless or giving away your power to not being enough, yep. and then you recognize where you you sent it to, and then you all you have to do is simply have the intention and like declaration of oh, okay, I was giving my power away to that. Come on back, okay, cool. I remember, mm-hmm. I am ultimately all worthy and all loving. Yeah, spot on. That 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 can't be. That can't be done if you don't actually know how to sit with it. Sit with it, like, right. You, you, have, you have to feel it first. You have to feel it and you have to let it, let it breathe you, let it move you, let it sound you. Mm-hmm. Um, you, know, you might have to sit there, oh, you know, like I'm, I'm a piece of shit, you know, and you just mm-hmm. welcome that. And um, like any time I welcome a feeling, it becomes a powerful source of inspiration. Hmm. So tell tell us more about that. The difference between, um, like, being negative and like you know yeah. telling ourselves that we're powerless and welcoming a feeling so that we process it to reclaim our power. Mm. Yeah. So the the difference between like doing some kind of like negative positive reframes like oh you know like ah I'm not good enough for these clients okay. All right, um, get my journal out. I need to reframe and I need to do some, um, some NLP or some like some affirmations naked in the mirror. But that's actually not confronting it. Um, mm. uh, for whatever reason, um, time and time again, I see the, the root of an energetic emotional knot, as I call them, will not change until we feel it. Mm. Um, and so when I feel something, um, mm, when I feel something, it, it starts to move. Like it's, it, it's like, you know, I've had this uh, energetic emotional knot in my stomach or my heart. Or like, oh, I'm not enough. I'm, I'm so useless. Mm. And, you know, most people will avoid that because we, we just, as a society, we're in our infancy in, in knowing how to feel our emotions. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, you're like, oh, like I can feel that. Oh, what does that feel like? Oh, it feels like betrayal. Oh, it feels like disappointment. And then like you keep diving through the layers and then eventually um, eventually, it, it just changes. This is just what it does. Um, and I don't know the full reason why, but um, I believe like I have largely like shamanic mind and experience of a lot of things yeah. and um it just changes mm. what i what i also know is like breathing um transmutes like energy right takes takes something yes. that is energy you breathe it in and it like gives us life so same thing if there's mm. like stuck energy i think breath is a great catalyst or transmutation yeah. tool or whatever you want to call it device to change the Thing, the emotion into something else so it's like if we mm-hmm. welcome it and we're breathing and we're conscious and we're aware we're feeling it then it gives it an opportunity to not be suppressed and like pushed down and tried like isolated like we try to like i i know for me i would try to like isolate these emotions put them down and bury them and i never have to deal with them again but if i sit with it and breathe it through like literally i'm taking life mm-hmm. breathing it in mm-hmm. breaking up the mm-hmm. the stuck energy and exhaling the 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 toxicity, the, the stuckness, the tension, the stress, all of it, the unhealthy and, and releasing it. So I'm free of that. And, and then that's what creates spaciousness and aliveness and power. Yes. Now, and the, the focus has to be feeling and welcoming. Like that's the agenda is mm. to feel and welcome. The, the agenda in, in li- doing this and living from this place is not to get to somewhere. Like, I know that that happens. Like, yeah. I know that that happens. That, like, if, if I feel this, then I'll probably have some kind of ins- inspired action. Right. But the agenda and the focus is on feeling 
and welcoming it and breathing, not like, oh, I'm going to go into this and get some kind of outcome. Right. Like, I'm, okay, I'll, I'll only be in here long enough to get my happiness and power yeah. back, damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't um, totally. Can, can I share a, a, a very significant framework? Yes. Yeah, cool. So, um, so the, the self-worth to kingdom framework that – that I use, um, and this I essentially just observed this in clients, um, and then created the system from it. So, um, are you familiar with the King archetype? I know that there's like the King, Warrior, Lover, Magician. I know that those four yeah. archetypes. Cool. So, um, just for anyone listening, archetypes. Um, are like maps, blueprints, and patterns. So if, if I say to you, Chris, I had, um, no, if I go say to Brian Jones, man, I love that interview with Chris. Like Chris has the, has the heart of a lion. It's like, you know, most people are going to be like, oh, you know, he's brave, courageous, and strong. Mm. So that, that's the archetype is, is like the embodiment of something. And so the, 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 the king in all of us, men or women, or, or any other identity that you have, um, the, the king archetype is a vision for what we want in our life from our heart. Wow. So it's like the king stands on top of his, her, their hill, and, it, and it's, you know, the hill is empty. And it's like, you know, over there will be the fields. Over there will be the school for the children. Over there will be the stable for my white majestic horses. Over there will be the palace and the kingdom shall flourish. It's a vision for who we want to be and how we want to live our lives from our heart. Hmm. Now, self-worth is extremely important because if we do not feel worthy, if we do not inherently source our worth from inside of ourselves, Mm-hmm. Then we place it externally. Then we put it onto someone or something, right. either a person or a thing, like a material thing, car, money, or status, recognition. Mm-hmm. I have, you know, a million Instagram followers, you know, like whatever it may be. And when we do that, we then live externally for those things or those people. So, um, our self-worth affects our behavior and our boundaries. So when it's put outside of ourselves, we, if it's under someone, then we often become people pleasers. We, we say yes when we want to say no. Um, or we become provers, like, oh, I don't like that guy because he has more, more money than me. I'm going to prove that I'm better than him some, somehow. And so it's not, we're not living from... From the inside, we're not living from a place of our truth. We're living to please or prove or like something or someone. And um, it's like when we live from that place of trying to get our um, our worth met from the outside, because we're not living for ourselves, we don't take action, which is true to ourselves. Mm. And if we don't take action that's true to ourselves, how the heck are we going to create a kingdom? That is truly what we want. We're not. <laughs> We're not. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so it's like our behavior does that thing and our boundaries. Yeah, I'll explain. I'll explain this part because I've just seen like people have, people struggle to put up, have healthy boundaries. And so um, listen, I'm, I'm in my apartment now and it's like boundaries is essentially um, – my working philosophy is that my boundaries are in place to keep my heart open. Hmm. I love it. So if, if someone oversteps my boundaries or I give up, which that's, that, that's hard to do. Hmm. It's, it's way more usually about us. Like we loosen our boundaries or we compromise on our truth. And so if I compromise my boundaries, usually what happens is like disconnection happens. I disconnect from my heart and I disconnect from their heart. Resent happens. Anger happens. Judgment happens. 
And so that's why like boundaries are so important because boundaries, when, when we overstep them, well, then we disconnect. And why would we want to have a relationship with someone if we're, if we're creating from the energy of disconnection from our heart? Mm. Mm. Um, and so I'll skip the part about the apartment. I won't explain that. But, yeah, that's, that's the triangle. It's like king, our kingdom sits at the top in this and then our self-worth and our behaviour and our boundaries directly affect each other and affect the kingdom that, that we live in. Yeah, yeah. And, and what I hear is as a king... The king archetype creates the vision, and the mm-hmm. vision is created through the heart, through you know one's soul, one's one's you know full expression of being. And mm-hmm. when we don't have those boundaries in place, then we guard our heart. If if we don't have our boundaries in place, then we are we're too like we we have evidence to show why it is it is not safe to express our heart, to share our heart, to open our heart up because we're unwilling to mm-hmm. guard the boundaries. So we say, hey, we get taken advantage of, we can't trust people, you know, whatever else might come up in that. And so we close mm-hmm. our heart and we're unable to be the king who expresses the vision and manifests it and creates it and acts on it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Dude, that's powerful, man. That's powerful. So Brian Brian Jones is in the in the audience. You you spoke about him. He came into existence. Oh, yeah. Love you, brother. He said Australia's favorite son. He said that's deep. A hundred percent it is, Brian. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. So, you know, really like getting clear on boundaries is super important. Um, and like where would you recommend we start with those boundaries? How do we start establishing those and um, you know, creating safety for us to express our heart? Mm, good question. Um, first of all, we, we can't know what our boundary is if we don't know what we want and what we do, what we don't want. So uh, I will go to the apartment metaphor. So it's like if I have lax boundaries, right, uh-huh. and that's the equivalent to my, my, my just leaving my apartment door open. Oh, God. Just, <laughs> you know, and it's like, well, with a like, come on inside, and it's like, if I just leave my apartment door open, people come in, they eat my eggs, they drink my milk. Um, can, I, can, I, can I swear on this? I don't know. Yes. Yeah, cool. It's like they, they shit in my toilet, you know, <laughs> they sleep in my bed and don't make it. Um, and it's like, well, how the heck, you know, it's like this is my kingdom. This is My, my yeah. apartment is my kingdom. So how can I keep my kingdom in order if I'm, I just let any, anyone come in? And... On the flip side, if I lock that door and and never open it, hmm. it's, uh, it's a, that's lonely. That's yeah. lo- hey, that's that's just lonely. B, we need human connection because we just do because we're humans. And B point two point two B is, <laughs> is well, we also need human connection to collaborate and create. Yeah. Um, so the first thing is like, what do you want? What don't you want? Hmm. Um, and that, that's, a, that's a massive place to start. And yeah, that, that's where I would recommend people to start. And inevitably what, what will happen is, um, like you can make a list of that, right? I, I want to feel this way. Yeah. Um, I, I um, want to be treated this way. Yeah. Um, where I want to experience this in my life, mm-hmm. um, and and then inevitably what will happen is people will write down a thing, and if they're connected enough to themselves, they'll they'll be able to feel when part of them goes, you don't deserve that. Mm. Like you, you're that's never going to happen. You can't have that. Um, and so how to create safety? Oh, this, like, first of all, you nail it with the word safety. Um, like I, I, to me, self worth is um, is like a cocktail made up of safety, trust, and permission. Wow. It's like if I gave you a cocktail and it's got a nice little fancy story, and you're like, oh, what is it, this, sir? I'm like, well, there's safety, there's trust, and there's permission. Hmm. Um, and they, along with self worth, they're the four pillars of what I call effortless expression. 
Um, and so safety is the very first thing that we need to connect to our heart. Um, so where to start with that is um, probably fear. <laughs> okay, the, the answer is that depends on the individual. I can't give a prescription um, because when I'm sitting with someone, um, like I, I guide them into their own stuff. Um, yeah, so where, where to from there? Um, yeah, it has to come back to feeling again. It has to come back to sitting with the feeling and feeling of like, do you feel safe? Do I feel safe hmm. to express my heart or do I not? Because boundaries are an express, expression of the heart. Boundaries are an expression of the heart. So like sitting with that feeling of do I feel safe? Do I like, do I have the trust of, of like, cause you mentioned a couple different powerful things. You mentioned yeah. self-worth is a function of safety of trust and of permission um, to mm. feel that self-worth. We talked about sitting with the feeling, right? Sitting with the feeling. Mm. We talked about boundaries, how those are important to um, establish it's, that safety and also trust, right? To trust ourselves, like knowing that we can trust ourselves to maintain those boundaries as well. If, if we are, unclear on what we want and what we don't want, then we don't trust ourselves because we like historically have lacked trust to, to, mm. to feel empowered to like, we've lacked mm. trust in ourselves to maintain something. And we've, we've experienced the consequences of that subconsciously at some level. Um, so it's like really establishing those boundaries creates the safety, creates the trust. Is that all correct so far? Yeah. Yeah, okay. pretty much. It, it, it really comes back to feeling. Like you need to feel like where you don't feel safe and where you do feel safe um, and recognize like you, your role in that, the, your, the individual's role in, oh, my heart doesn't feel safe hmm. like in, in this situation or my heart just doesn't feel safe because of this. And then it's a process of, like in a nurturance. Hmm. So, what is how does the permission come into play? Um, in what sense? Like, where, what, what? Tell us a little bit more about that. I'm a little unclear on how that is a a key leverage point and how it fits into the equation of self worth. Hmm. Yeah, um, permission is the, the two words that are kind of synonymous with that is, is allow and let. Okay. So it's, will I allow myself to speak my truth? Hmm. Yeah. Will, will I let my heart be seen? But the, the, the thing, that won't come before, generally before safety and and trust got it and to yeah. even get to that point we have to sit with it to experience it and not be resistant to it yeah but powerful. powerful man i love this and we we have a question in the audience nigel asked how much is self-worth and he said wouldn't yourself have endless value so i'm not sure yeah. yeah the, the question again is how much how much is self worth and wouldn't you have endless value like um, as a as a human being that self worth is is infinite right so how would you respond to mm. like how would you measure quote unquote self worth? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a really good. How would I measure self worth? Um, I when I am. Um, working with myself and when I'm working with clients, um, I use the language of low, medium, and high. Okay. For some reason, I see it like um, a test tube. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I, I see it like, yes, it's, oh, self-worth is low, medium is high. And, and, and what, I, what I get is people to feel into that. Um, mm. 
and, and it's based on their experience. And mm. and they can always feel like when when we're when we're deep deeply dropped into an energetic state, they can always feel like yeah, my self worth is really full, mm. or actually my self my self worth is leaking. So um, it can be felt. And and what you can what you can do to kind of test this on yourself is first start by just sitting and breathing, and then. Um, you know, first just really drop into your body with, without any agenda to try and get somewhere and just, just feel and just breathe. And then you can, there's a couple of questions that really are kind of key indicators. And it's like, who, who's this, whose approval am I most trying to gain? Hmm. Who, whose disapproval do I most fear? Um, they're, they're the two major uh, ones, basically. Um, and then there, there's stuff around like things, like um, like what 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 am I trying to achieve, and in that achievement, what am I trying to feel? Mm-hmm. So you might notice, oh, I'm trying to a- achieve a six-figure coaching business, and then you're like, when you feel into what that's like, oh yeah, I would actually feel good enough. Mm-hmm. And so that's a kind of reverse engineering from the vision that you want to come to the feeling. Hmm. that you're trying to gain and then um being connected to yourself you, you can just feel that you can feel like oh yeah no, i'm full oh shit yeah i'm trying to get that thing because i'm not full hmm. 